All right, so in this video, I'm gonna go through um, depth first search. And so what, how DFS works is that for every unvisited vertex I have, I'm gonna call explore on it. So that means that if I have disconnected components on the graph, I'm gonna explore everything. Because if I finish exploring one set of vertices, then I move on to the next set, and that should not have been visited yet. So when I'm exploring, I'm gonna visit this vertex, right? So when I enter a vertex, I'm gonna mark it as visited. Otherwise, call as like, I make a call, ex I make a explore call, and once I make an explore call, I'm adding this vertex to my recursive call stack. And I'm gonna pre-visit this number, uh, this vertex V. So after that, for every edge, whether, okay, so this, if we have an undirected graph, for every edge V U, that just means that for every edge incident to this vertex V, I'm gonna explore that neighboring vertex if it's not been visited before. That means if it's not in my call stack, I'm gonna make a recursive call on it. So that's why we have the recursive call stack here. And after like we visit every neighbor and all its neighbors' neighbors and so on, we're gonna post visit back to V, right? So our recursive call is gonna return us back to V. And up here, what's gonna happen is that we're gonna post visit V. And so here's my pre-visit and my post visit function. And pre-visit, so here's I have a global counter, right? Let's think about this as global counter. I'm gonna set the pre-visit number of this vertex to this counter and then increment it by one. So same thing for post visit, except I'm setting the post uh, number, right? So let's do this, yeah, go through this example. I'm gonna start at vertex D. I gonna, I'm gonna pre-visit, right? So I'm gonna mark it as true. I'm making a recursive call on D, marking as true. Pre-visit using a counter, right? Counter right now is zero. And now I increment it by one. And I'll look at its all its edges. Um, so we're breaking ties alphabetically. So the first edge that comes out of my edge set, suppose, let's say, it's not my edge set, right? So, so the first edge that comes out of my um, incident edge set is gonna be this edge because we're gonna break ties alphabetically and B comes before C, G, and E. So I'm gonna take this edge and now I'm gonna make a recursive call on B. So I'm gonna add B to my recursive call stack. I'm gonna pre-visit B using counter, which is one. Increment the counter by one, uh, oops. Increment, um, this should be down two, right? I look at B, B I look at J, E, A. Um, a comes first, A has not been visited yet, so I'm gonna visit A, make a recursive call on it. Pre-number of A is gonna be two, increment, a has only one edge, it has not been visited yet, so we're gonna visit C, make a cursor call to C. Pre is three, increment. Now C has two choices, right? So the first edge comes out as D, but since D has been visited yet, we go to the next edge, which is gonna be C to F, right? These are my set, I don't wanna visit it because I'm currently visiting, right? Either I'm currently visiting or I visit it and post out of it already. So when visit F, F gets a pre-number of four. Now F holds one edge, there's only one edge. Go to G, right? Oh, here with crystal call stack, visit G. G pre-visit as five, increment to six, right? Now I look at this again. D comes, this edge comes first, but D is my call stack, this has been visited before, I skip it. I go to this edge, right, the other edge. G has not been visited before. So I visit this, I mean, sorry, H has not been visited before. I visit it, add it to my call stack, pre-number as six. H, now, a first edge pops out by alphabetical order, it's gonna be E. V has not been visited before, it's not on my call stack. So, I'm gonna visit it. I'm gonna add the pre-visit number as the next number, which is gonna be seven, right? And now I look at E's edges. All right, so here's um, uh, where it gets fun. So E sees edge E to, oh, sees E to B, but B is on my call stack. It means it's been labeled as visited, so we skip it, right? So same thing with D. D is also my call stack. Let's add E back here. D is also my call stack, so I don't visit it. So, okay. Now that I have no more edges to explore, I'm gonna post visit on E, right? So I'm gonna post visit, I set E's counter, um, E's post visit number to my counter value as A, increment, and now I stop, 
right? So I stop. Okay, so where was the recursive call to E from, right? So we see that in my recursive call stack, when I stop on E, I see that H called, made the explore call on E, right? So in here, I made the explore call from H to E. So I go back. H then goes to the next edge, which is J. J has not been visited before. I'm going to visit it, J, right? Mark it as, let's see, 9. This gets increment to 10. J has one edge, is visiting um, its incident to B. B, this neighbor, is in my call stack. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop, right? In my while loop, post visit on J. J, post visit, increments counter by 1. This becomes 10. This here increments to 11. When I post visit, it means I'm ending my explore call, and now I can remove J from my call stack, right? So, but I, all I'm doing is crossing it out, because as long as, as long as a vertex has entered my call stack before, it means that it's marked as visited. When I cross it out, it means I'm post visiting on that. So I'm going to post visit on J, right? So next see I see H. H has no more edges remaining. I post visit as 11. This goes to 12, right? H post visit out to G, which is the next one in this call stack. G has no more edges remaining, right? Remember, I visited D, F, N, then H. So I'm going to post visit on G, post visit as 12, increment to 13. Now, G, I post visit, um, I request call out of it to F. Again, post visit, no more edges remaining. 13, I now out to C. C, no more edges remaining, right? I already marked this as off, all these edges. Basically, all these edges I have like seen, but I've seen the edge, but I'm not taking it because I visited the other vertex that is in my call stack, right? So C has no more edges, right? Um, I label it as, ooh, where am I? 13, this should be 14. Increment, exit out A. A has no more edges remaining. Um, A gets 15 of the post. Increment out to B. B gets a post value of 16. Increment, exit out. And then get D. D gets a value of 17. Increment. And then finally we're gone, right? So we see that we enter from um, a call stack from D and we exit from D. That means D has the smallest pre-visit number and the largest post-visit number. And when you see this, you know that there's only one, the, the entire graph only has one connected component. And if it's a directed graph, then the entire graph is a strongly connected component because if I had another pre-visit values larger than my post of D, that means that I visit everything I could visit from D and I have to start a pre-visit number from somewhere else due to this global counter. So if this post-visit is the largest number and pre is the smallest number, then you can only have this connected component. So I'm going to start on D, visit its neighbors, visit all its neighbors of those neighbors, and so on until I finish. And then when I post back out, it goes in reverse order, right? And then I'm going to end up at D. So D ends, and there's no more, no other vertices that I can start on that's not, right, that's not connected. Because if it's connected to D, if there's a path from D, any of these vertices, DFS will visit it. So as long as there's no other vertex that I need to visit after I post visit D, then the entire graph is a connecting component, and I, D, the starting vertex should have the smallest pre and the largest posts.